typically one or well, uh, this size, I'm going to say about one every square foot every two seconds. Maybe every other square foot. A hundred pounds. If you guys want to just, if you haven't lifted a hundred pounds lately, you need to go find something that weighs a hundred pounds and pick it up. You need to be able to appreciate what a hundred pounds falling from the sky is going to do to things. Well, from our perspective, it's just falling. But yeah, it's pretty much like maybe the belt from Saturn, something hit that and sheared off and sent hundred pound rings, ring ice at us. I mean, who knows? I don't know what God's going to do. I mean, he's already hurled a mountain into the sea, woodworm into all the fresh water, which we still don't know if that actually goes away or not. You know, the water could have been bitter before and killing it because it was bitter. Now it's bloody bitter. I don't think it's bitter, more bitter than blood. Oh, because the plague of the hell, because it is, because its plague was extremely severe. Yeah. <laughs> and they're still blaspheming God. Boy, howdy. It's like, but you know what? That shouldn't shock us. Who were these meant for? These are meant for the people who have taken the mark of... Now, whether or not they know they're serving Satan, we can't tell you. But I can tell you this. They know they're against God. They may not know who they're for, but they know who they're against. Now, I want to teach you guys something. And this is probably the most critical thing. This concept will branch out into many other areas if you ever have to teach on the Bible or something else. I want you to think about this. Okay? I'm going to use two different books, Matthew and Luke. When did Christ prove His divinity? Can anybody tell me? Was it when He rose? Or did He prove it before that? Before Christ died, He proved he was who he said he was. And this is fascinating. This was a recent, this is recent knowledge, even for me. Mark 9, verse 17. And one of the multitude answered him, Teacher, I brought unto thee my son, who hath a dumb spirit, and whosoever it taketh, and wheresoever it taketh him, it dasheth him down, and he foameth. and grindeth his teeth, and pineth away. And I speak to thy disciples that they should cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him unto me. Okay. Why couldn't the disciples cast out the demon? Is it because they were not Jesus that they could not cast him out? Is that the actual reason? Let me rephrase it. What is required to cast out the demon? Yes. But why? Is it just the Arnold Schwarzenegger of demons? Why? And to answer the question that I know of, it is not mentioned in here, in the Bible. It is alluded to, but it's not point blank said this is a requirement. I did not write that one down. Okay. We all, everyone remember, Legion. Okay? Recall if you can, what did Christ say to Legion? What's the first thing he said to him? He asked him his name. Why? Why?
being specific. In order to cast out a demon, you must know its name. Why couldn't in Mark 9, why couldn't they cast the demon out? Why did they ask him? Why did they ask him his name? Christ asked Legion, what's your name? We are Legion, for we are many. Why did the disciples do the same thing? The demon literally couldn't because the demon was mute. So if the demon's mute, well, if the demon makes the man mute, then you can't ask the demon his name. And you can't cast a demon out. Christ did it. And Christ didn't even ask him his name. He already knew, yes. But he didn't use it to cast him out. It says what he said. So what did Christ have that the disciples did not? A direct line to big gun to stay. Because only God can remove a demon, because God knows his name. So if Christ, in this moment, he executed the proof that he was who he said he was, because he, only God, could do what he did. So he proved his divinity, and that he was who he claimed to be before he went to the cross and came back. So how'd that play out, though? <laughs> and they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tore him grievously, and he fell to the ground and, fought and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long has he, how long time is it since he came, since this hath come unto him? And he said, From a child. And oft times it hath cast him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And he said unto him, If thou canst, all things are possible to him that believe it. Straightway the father of the, of the child cried out and said, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. <clears throat> and when Jesus saw the multitude came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I command thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And having cried out and tore him much, and he came out, and the boy became one as dead, insomuch that the more part said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him up. And he arose. I'm going to stop there. Move on to Matthew. Matthew 12, 23. Same scenario. Um, then was brought unto him one possessed with a demon, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the dumb man spake and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David? The people asked a question. Can he be? Why did they ask that question? Because everybody knows it's common sense for them because the Pharisees even teach to cast out a dumb spirit, a mute spirit, one that cannot speak, can only be done by the Word of God. The Pharisees teach this. So much that the people ask, can he be the son of David? Who are they asking? Are they asking, looking at Christ saying, can he be the son of David? No. That's in the Pharisees. So imagine, you just saw what Pastor Keith said, only this can happen if it's this. And you see it, and you say, you said this, is this this? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this man doth not cast out demons, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the demons. 
And knowing their thoughts, he said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If Satan casteth out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? Now, I don't think I have to translate that. I think that's pretty much, if I kick myself out of my house, my house goes away. So why would Satan kick out his own demons? His kingdom will fall if he does that. And if by Beelzebub cast out demons, by whom did yours... And if I by Beelzebub cast out demons, by who did your sons cast them out? That I will translate just for fun. If by Satan I cast out demons, and your sons cast out demons... Who were they casting them out by? It's a fair question. And it also shuts them up. But it's too late. But if I, by the Spirit of God, cast out demons, then is the kingdom of God come upon you. Or how can one enter into the house of the strong man and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man? And then, will, and then he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. Therefore I say unto you, every sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto man, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven. And whosoever shall speak the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speak against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world nor in that which is to come. There's a reason I wanted to teach you guys that. Why is Satan trying to destroy the Jews? <laughs> this, this generation that of the Pharisees, if you keep reading, starting with Matthew 13, if you pay attention, you will notice a change. Christ is no longer teaching doctrine anymore. He is no longer teaching the word, the gospel, anymore. He's teaching parables. And that's all he's teaching. Because after this event, I think Christ finally hit his point where he's like, I'm done. Nothing else I can do for you. I've done all I can for you. I give you plain. I have done what only the Messiah can. And you blame it on Beelzebub. I'm done. I've given you the only sign you required and you still won't believe. So since I give you plainly and you do not receive it, I will give you in a manner you can understand. But you still won't understand it. You will only understand the words, not the meaning. For the meaning will be hidden from you and is only for my disciples. Now, why does Satan want to destroy the Jews? If you know you're going to lose, why would you even try? Arrogance and pride, for starters. But what's the objective? Will killing the Jews prevent Christ's return? Yes, it will. It said, wait, hang on. I think I forgot to read a verse. <laughs> it just occurred to me, like, I had to mess with something. Luke 13, 34 and 35. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who sent her, how often I wanted to gather you Gather your children together, just as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not have it. Because 13, Luke 13 tells the same story that we just went through. Behold, your house is left to you desolate, and I say to you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, I'm going to ask you again. If Satan destroys the Israelites, will that prevent Christ's coming? 